Yo, what is up guys and welcome to another episode of Becoming a Wild Rift Expert. As you can see, I'm not at home right now, I'm at a hotel because I'm actually casting the Wild Rift icons as well and I don't actually have enough time to talk even because Fury is gaming with a crazy invade. So, just before we get into this game, quickly, I'm quickly gonna explain to you guys why this is gonna be the most awesome game you'll see. First of all, we got Nova Esports, this is a Chinese team, this is the third team in the WRL and... For your information, every single Chinese team made it to the group stage. There's going to be 16 teams in the group stage, and four of them is already a Chinese team. That's just so you know, okay? And then we have Furious Gaming, who is from the WOL, which is Latino America. And this team is a bit, you know, like, people don't really expect much. Because it's Latino America against a Chinese team, right? Like, that's, that's... It's obvious that you go for the Chinese team to win, because they are so incredible. But this game will show you some crazy stuff. So... Um, this game is gonna go to the late game, and that's what's gonna make it so amazing to watch. Like this, I believe this is gonna be like a 31-minute game or something. And when you get a get, when you go to the late game, you look at champions, right? Like which team is gonna be better in the late game? So let's actually take a look at both comps. First of all, Furious Gaming. They have a Jax. This is one of the best late game champions in the game. He wins pretty much any 1v1, and it's just incredibly powerful in the late game. Next up, we got Prusher on the Z. Now this is a champion that could be good in the late game, but can also be horrible in the late game. It is good if you can force out important things like the stasis and the flash. So if Prusher dives Remake, Remake is the Zix by the way, you can see what will happen, right? Zix is going to be burning very important things to dodge out that ultimate. And Z ultimate is on like a 20, 25 second to cooldown in the late game. So that's what makes Z also a decent late game champion. And then Sartor on the Orianna as well. Super strong late game champion. On the opposite side, Nova. They only really have the Zix. You no know, remake on that Zix. Besides that, like sure, you know, there's some champions that can work in the late game. But the obvious better team composition in the late game is Furious Gaming. But. There is a but right there, right? You know, Furious Gaming is better in the late game, but Nova doesn't want to allow that. And if you actually look at the gold count right now, it's already a 800 gold lead. And honestly, like, it's kind of hard to explain how these Chinese teams do it, because this is not just Nova. Every single Chinese team is somehow, some way, just always ahead in gold. So there's a few explanations, and let me tell you about them, but, like, I can't share, I can't spill all of their secrets, because it's, it's just, like... We casters don't even know how they do it at some time. So the first thing is getting every single minion. And this one thing right here, it caught my eye when watching the Chinese teams. And you really should do this as well in your games. Like practice farming. And farming when you're not under a turret is super easy. Like if you look at Prusher right now, it's going to be really easy. And if you look at Libra right now as well, like it's really easy for him to farm these minions, right? Because it's only minions against minions. You can't see how ever see that. He just lost that big minion. Like... This doesn't happen to Chinese teams. They don't just lose minions like that. You know, if they lose a minion, it's only a few minions. Or if it's like super pressured under the turret. And when Chinese teams get those minions, you know, when Nova get those minions, and then when Furious Gaming doesn't get those minions, that's gonna accumulate. You know, when every single lane outfarms the other lane, that's how you get these minor gold leads. And that's why Nova Esports is 1,000 gold ahead in one minute. And right here, free kill for Nova. This guy right here, by the way, Long, is... In my opinion, the best jungler in the play-ins right now. So play-ins means I'm not considering the top one teams from each regions, from each region, because in Wild Rift icons right now, the top two, three, four teams have to fight each other to get to the group stage. But the number one teams from each region are already placed in the group stage. So from these top two, three, four teams, I would say Long is by far the best jungler. So keep your eye on him and how he plays this game. And funnily enough. I believe th in this game, it's the closest anyone got to out jungling long. You can see right now, if you look at the gold count, Echo is only 400 gold behind. It's funny that I'm saying only 400 gold behind, because every single other game, long absolutely smashed the enemy jungler. So, that's just a thing for you to keep your eye on, right? Like, long, who's playing Fiora right now, this is the best jungler, like, from the planes. Alright. So, another thing that I want to explain to y'all, which is... The whole breaker Lucian. Should you build it? Should you not build it in your solo kill games? So, first of all, whole breaker Lucian is only viable when you play him in the mid lane or in the baron lane. Right now it's being played in the mid lane, but Nyan swapped lanes. He went to the baron lane. And I'll tell you later why he swapped. So, what is good about whole breaker on Lucian? Um, it makes him tanky. When he's alone, it makes him tanky. Because a whole breaker gives you magic resistant armor when you're alone. 
And that is a big reason of why you get it. Because if Nyan is up against Prusher on that Z, you know, Lucian against Z, and if Lucian has a hole breaker, he should practically never die against the Z. Like, because he has so much armor and magic resist and health from the hole breaker. He shouldn't die in a 1v1 when he's alone, in an isolated 1v1, and that's the power of the Hallbreaker. That's why you see people build it. You, like, assassins will struggle to kill you because you're so incredibly tanky. And the second reason people build it is you can see it on the top left right now, Nyan just took a turret. Because of the Hallbreaker, he does increased damage to the turret, so not only he's tankier, he also does more damage to turrets, and Nova Esports is 3,000 gold ahead right now. Furious Gaming actually chooses to go for the dragon. Oh, that should be a kill. Yeah, that's a kill. There you go. Very, very... Oh, is it though? Is it though? There you go. Amazingly played by Prusher right there. He knew that he could go all in with that Z. He got that kill on Yami. But the question is, is it worth it? And... Yeah, it's worth it now because they're going for the Rift Herald. It wouldn't be worth if they actually fought for the dragon. Because Nova Esports, you know, that sure they lost the Galio. But he's going to be back very, very soon. And... They all still had a lot of ultimates up as well, so it would have been very risky for Furious Gaming to fight that near the dragon, but it's okay, right? Like, it's okay. They took the Rift Herald, they gave away a dragon, it's fine. Like, you don't always have to take dragon. This is a thing that I hate teams see, like, I hate to see this when teams do this, where they always go for dragons. Like, Rift Herald is good as well, even though it got nerfed in a recent patch, it is good. Especially in this particular game, because Nova already took two turrets. Like, Nova already pushed two turrets. And Furious Gaming needs to get something back. The most important turret that Furious Gaming does have to get is gonna be that mid lane turret. However, I assume they're gonna use the Rift Herald to push that mid lane turret because it's just worth so much more than other turrets. Another thing that they should do is they shouldn't really place it down now, the Rift Herald. They should kind of wait for the next dragon or the next Rift Herald because they can put a they can apply a lot of pressure with the Herald. They can essentially put it in the mid lane, rotate to the dragon, try to start off the dragon while the Rift Herald is pushing the mid lane. Like these are things Furious Gaming can do. Yize gets caught out here. He should die, right? Like Yize, he sure he's playing Garen, but there's no way, right? There's no way he survives. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Like there's no way he survives a one versus three like that. Look at Long though. This guy is fearless. Is he gonna? Ah, nearly got that kill. Nearly, nearly got that kill. Whoo! This guy is unbelievable, and you'll see in the late game what he's gonna do. So Libra, which is the Jace, he actually got a hole breaker. Not necessarily because he wants a hole breaker. This is more to kind of counter out the enemy hole breaker. We see this happen a lot, um, and you should apply this in your rank matches as well. When your enemy laner gets a hole breaker, you have to decide yourself, right? Okay. Do I need a hole breaker to counter him out? Yes or no? Because in a one versus one, in an isolated one versus one, very likely the champion with a hole breaker is gonna win, unless he's like super behind. And the reason is because you just get so many good stats when you're alone with a hole breaker, and um, it's hard to fight against a champion without a hole breaker yourself. And that's essentially why Libra in the Baron lane, so not Prusher in the mid lane, but Libra in the Baron lane went for a hole breaker himself to counter out Nyan on that Lucian. By the way guys, make sure you give this video a like if you're enjoying it. And uh, I'll ask you guys to test your knowledge later on in the video. You're gonna you're gonna have to wait for that one. Ooh, Kappa, C bomb at Alistar, gonna catch out someone. You can see he caught out the Galio. And that should be a free kill right there. Beautifully played by Kappa C, but that's a thing that Alistars can do as well. I mean, just just look at how beautiful he was just waiting in that bush and then easy kill. Knock up the enemy and push them back. So you can see, right? Like he didn't instantly go in because if he would have gone in. Nothing would have happened. He kind of waited for Yami to face check that bush. And then he pushed him all the way into his team and got him. So here you can see Furious Gaming trying to push the mid lane. Oh, the Herald is... Yeah, the Herald didn't even, didn't even go for it. That's just a waste. It's kind of a tragedy for Furious Gaming to be honest. Because they haven't taken a single turret right now. Nova took two turrets already. And Furious Gaming hasn't taken anything. Oh, it's not good. And you know what's actually funny? Because if we look at the gold count between Prusher and Nyan, which is the Z and the Lucian, Prusher is not ahead. He's actually behind by a thousand gold, even though he has two kills and one assist, as opposed to the one kill that Nyan has. That's crazy. So the question is, how? The answer is actually very simple. And I'm actually going to ask you guys, how? How the hell is Nyan 1,000 gold ahead, even though Prusher has more kills? The answer is simple, but you have to know this one. Test your knowledge. 
put it in the comments. If you get this one wrong, I'm gonna be mad, okay? Because I have literally given you the answer already in this video. Pause the video right now, test your knowledge. Alright, so, the simple answer. Nayan was split pushing all the time. He took a turret, he took a lot of minions on the side lanes, that is why he was able to get so much gold. And, yes, it is worth it, right? Like, this tactic works. It's gonna be a little bit harder to pull off in solo queue. However, Prusher trying to kill Nayan right here, unfortunately, just kind of wasted his ultimate. You know what Prusher actually tried to do there? This is a thing that... It's a bit hard for me to recommend to you guys because you really have to be a master of Z to effectively pull off this strategy, which is... Oh, look at that, by the way. Which is, he knew that he couldn't kill. Um, he knew that he couldn't get a kill right there, right? Like, he, he actually knew. I can tell you right now, he knew that he couldn't get the kill. So the question is, why did he still go in? He tried to bait Flash. You know, he tried to bait out a Flash, right? Like, he tried to scare off Yeezer right there. And in the case that Yeezer would Flash away, it's worth it. Because Pusher is going to have his ultimate again. He didn't pull it off very well because he didn't get the flash out and he wasted his ultimate. So he didn't have his ultimate for the next fight either. So it didn't work for him. But the idea works when you play Zed and when you're truly a master of Zed, you shouldn't only ult when you can get a kill. You can also just ult champions. And of course, you'll go for the kill, right? Like, I'm not telling you that you shouldn't go for the kill. I'm not telling you that you should just ult an enemy and run away. You should go for the kill. But even when you know that enemy can just flash away, or can use stasis, it can still be worth it because you're burning a cooldown. You're burning the flash, you're burning the stasis, and Zed's ultimate cooldown, as I told you earlier on in, the, in this video, is incredibly low. The further you get into this game, the more this applies. Like, the cooldown is gonna go down to, like, what, 25 seconds or something like that when you get ability haste? So, that's why you should use it. Don't just, don't just save your ability for the very best moment of the game. This applies to a lot of champions. So, lesson right here is, don't just save your ability for the perfect play. Like, you know, Malphite ultimate, Fiora's ultimate is a great example as well. Zed's ultimate. Don't just save it. Use it. And you have to find a balance, right? Because, of course, sometimes you have to save it, but you have to find a balance. Because if Fiora, Fiora's ultimate in the late game is on, like, a 20-second cooldown, Olaf's ultimate in the late game is on, like, a 15-second cooldown, I believe. Use it. Just use it. Because you're going to be burning more important things from the enemy than your ultimate. Like, if you chase down an enemy with Fiora ultimate, and then suddenly that enemy uses their flash, it's worth it. Even if you don't proc anything from that ultimate, it is worth it. Because you're going to have your ultimate up very soon, but the enemy is not going to have their flash up very soon. So, all of this is just to quickly explain to you why Prusher went for that one. Because I want, I want you guys to understand those types of things as well. Um, okay. Interesting. Ah, oh, the builds just went away. I wanted to talk about the builds. I'll talk about them later because there's something very interesting right there. Uh, the Baron is spawning and currently Nova Esports is winning the division game because they have a lot of wards sitting next to that Baron, which is very important for them. Furious Gaming is struggling for sure. There's just so many wards. Oh, Libra just popped one ward right there. But Nova is still winning the division game. And Capo Siba is just going for a hard engage. A beautiful, beautiful Galio ultimate. Oh my god. God, no way. Oh my god. I'm sorry, guys. That was the timing was just wow. Let's actually let's just look at that one real quick again. Let's just look at that one again. I'm just pausing the video right now just to show you how beautiful this truly is. Capo Siba from Furious Gaming did a good engage, but then Yami's response. You see how Prusher wanted to follow up, but he just he stayed away. No one can follow up. And if I play the clip again. You can see Capo Siba gets caught by the Fiora ultimate. Reason that he got killed. And then also the Garen ultimate. He used his ultimate on Alistar. But he still got killed. Because long on that Fiora does true damage. True damage goes right through Alistar's ultimate. And then when he got to a low amount, low enough amount of HP. Yeezy on the Garen finished him off as well. Just oh, that was perfect. I love watching this. You see how crazy that is. Furious Gaming just had no chance whatsoever. You saw how Nova Esports used that Galio ultimate to just completely zone out Furious Gaming. So there you can see other uses for the Galio ultimate as well. Because what most people like to do is they just use the Galio ultimate when one of their teammates go in. But there you could see Yami on that Galio. He used it perfectly to deny the engage from Furious Gaming. Right here, Furious Gaming is actually winning the team fight. They're all constantly diving Remake on that Zix. And you can see, right, like Remake burned his stasis enchant. And he wasn't able to escape. Very, very well played by Fury Game. So now let's talk about the builds, okay? I want to compare Oriana's build to Zig's build. Oriana went for a more late game build because she has the Seraph's Embrace. She, like, 
Early on in the game, she wasn't as strong. But now that she has the Seraph's Embrace, she's gonna have a lot of AP and she's gonna have the defensive stats. Remake on that Zix, however, he he's going for a Rabadon's Deathcap second item, which means sure he'll get a lot of a lot of damage early on in the game, but it's gonna take him a while until he gets that Seraph's Embrace. He's gonna be very vulnerable, and he is the one guy that needed the Seraph's Embrace because he's gonna get dived on by Prusher on that Z. So he actually should have gone for the Seraph's Embrace second. Instead of uh, in I, I, did I say World of Ages? I mean Rabadon's Death Cap. Instead of the Rabadon's Death Cap. Because sure, Remake is going to have a lot of damage when he gets that Rabadon's Death Cap second. But that's not the item that he needs. He needs defense. He needs the Seraph's Embrace. And that's perhaps a mistake from him. Because Sartor on that Orianna right now, he does have that defense. You know, when he gets dived on by the Fiora, he's going to be able to survive much easier, easier than Remake on that Zix. So, let's actually see how that plays out throughout this game, right? You know what's funny, by the way, guys? This is just a fun little fact. I I'm casting right now, right? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm casting this tournament right now. And then when I make these videos and when I make my YouTube videos, I have to switch because sometimes I just want to scream like, Oh, Pantakill! And I still do it sometimes during these videos. But I I'm supposed to teach you guys how to play the game. But sometimes I still get a little too excited. And this is why. Look at <laughs> Yize just showed what he can do. So... If you ask yourself how the hell he did that, the answer is simple, right? As you can see in the slow motion right there in the bottom corner, Yize, he just used his second ability. When Garen uses his second ability, he can tank everything, except for true damage. Important thing to understand, except for true damage. He can tank anything, like, oh, there goes my mic. He can tank anything, and that's the beauty of Garen. I mean, that's the, that's what everyone hates about Garen, to be fair. You know, when you're up against the Garen, when he's just absolutely unkillable, um, the reason that he's unkillable is the second ability. Whenever you upgrade it, it increases the duration as well. Like, Garen's second ability at level 1 is gonna give him that shield that he has right now for 2 seconds. But on level 4, it gives him the shield for 5 seconds. That is why here you can see, he survived that. He survived all of that, you see. There's not many champions that can survive all of that punishment, except for Garen. Like, Garen is that one champion that can survive it all. So, um, if we actually look at the hole breakers, it's Libra on that Jace who has a hole breaker and Nyan on the Lucian. We see a lot of teams build two hole breakers, especially on a champion like the Garen, to split push. But Nova is not going to be building two hole breakers. The reason is because Yuzi went for Force of Nature. He's going for defense during team fights. Their strategy is to team fight with Fury's game. Here you can see it, right? Team fighting. Garen has ultimate boom. Perhaps a bit of an early ultimate, but. It's ok alright, they pushed away uh, Fury's Gaming and the Elder Dragon is up. This is the most important objective in the game and we're 17 minutes in and you can see it. Hole breakers, no hole breakers, it doesn't matter. Both teams are gonna contest this one. Remake is sitting on level 12 by the way, while Echo is sitting on level 14, while Prusher is on level 13. Remake is just unfortunately very very under level right now. That was a good ultimate by the way, but we have a full fight happening. Look at Prusher, look at the Z. He's still alive! I love the positioning of Yeezy as well, by the way. The Garen, he's just so aggressive. Kaposiba as well. Both tanks are playing this game so well. And now you can see it, right? This is the poke game. This is Orianna against Zix. Look at that Orianna damage right there. Right now, right, we have the um, Conqueror stack. And after those initial engages, no one can really do much except for the Orianna and the Zix, right? And it's funny to see how they follow up in those teamfights as well. Right now, Yami is just making sure they have the vision on the Elder Dragon. And I can tell you, Furious Gaming is sweating like crazy right now. Because the Elder Dragon is up. And Furious Gaming has zero vision. You can see it, right? Like, everyone is just walking towards the Elder Dragon. They want to place vision right there. They want to make sure that uh, Nova Esports is not doing it. And now Kaposiba finally confirmed it. And now he is taking away the vision from Nova Esports as well. It is all about that vision game. You can see right now, Nova has that one ward sitting in that bush right there. Zix ultimate as well. So, if you ask why is why is Remake constantly throwing a Zix ultimate right there? Doesn't he need it for the teamfight? The answer is yes. But he's using it because of what I told you earlier. The cooldown is low, and he's not necessarily burning important uh, abilities or cooldowns. He's just poking down Furious Gaming. He's poking them down, so they get to a lower amount of HP when a fight happens. Here you can see it again, Yize and Yami tanking up, but Yami is taking a lot of punishment and he just dies like it's nothing. Prusher on that set, surviving with just 1 HP. And Echo also on the Jax, using his ultimate, engaging and surviving everything. And it's actually Furious Gaming that comes out ahead. No one died. How incredible is that? 
crazy because no one died. Prussia was sitting on one HP, and now it's Furious Gaming that's take that takes the Elder Dragon. You actually have to watch what happens after this Elder Dragon, however, because um, we are gonna look into a replay, which is the Coca Cola pop off, by the way. So let's actually look at what Prussia, what happened to Prussia, which is the Z. Keep your eyes on Z right now. He went on Lion. He dealt a lot. Oh, he got Garen ulted, but he just barely, barely survived. He dealt a load of damage, went out, and then Nyan was just left to die. Like, you can see it. Echo, Kaposiba, Libra, they were finishing off everyone. And then Sartre, sitting in the backline, which is the Oriana as well, dealing the poke damage. Just pretty much played perfectly by Furious Gaming right there. Because even Prusia was able to survive. And now they got the Elder Dragon. It doesn't show in this graphic, but they did have it. Um, there is like a glitch with the graphic. I'm sorry for that, guys. But Furious Gaming has the Elder Dragon right now. And... When you have an Oriana with an Elder Infernal Dragon, that is, uh, that is hella scary. Interestingly though, uh, Sartre is not going for a Rabadon's Death Cap. I'm not sure if that's the approach that you should be taking. Hey, by the way, here, Prusher, yeah, there you can see it, right? Prusher goes on Nyan with his ultimate. He actually just fully straight up killed him. Because Nyan didn't have anything. He didn't have his flash. He didn't have stasis engine. He just killed him, you see? That's the Elder Infernal Dragon. That's what you can do. Oh, and also the Oriana dealing crazy amount of damage. Like... Furious Gaming is just running over Nova Esports right now, and this is this is a crazy thing because, as I said, these Chinese teams are normally unbeatable, and Furious Gaming is showing that yes, they are beatable, which is oh, you see how how Long tried to do a flash combo right there on Echo. If he was actually if he was actually able to hit that, he could have killed Echo because if he did his full ultimate, he could have actually just killed the Jax all the way. I'm saying Echo, but the Jax is named Echo, as you can see. His name is literally Echo. Funnily enough, Furious Gaming still hasn't taken a mid lane turret, so this, this game is not over by any means for Nova, just so you guys know, like, I'm saying Elder Dragon is like a game winning objective, it is, but it's not like 100%, it's like 80% game winning, Nova still has that 20% chance to win this game regardless, it's just, their Zix is so behind of the Oriana, like, Sartre has been doing such a good job to get ahead of uh, Remake, because you can see Remake is sitting on 3 items, he now finally finished that Seraph Embr Seraph's Embrace, but that's already after the Elder Dragon, so it's just so late for Remake to do that. You can see how aggressive Kaposiba is trying to be as well, but like you see what I mean, like Sartre is just gonna do so much more damage on that Oriana than Remake. I, I, I yeah, I was just gonna say, I expected Prusher to go in there. I, in the, I got the kill as well! He, he, burned the, he burned the stasis in chat and he still got the kill. But uh, I was just gonna say, there is no way Prusher is just gonna leave it like that, right? Because that is how you play Zed in the late game, exactly what Prusher is doing. You go in whenever. Because look at, look at his ultimate cooldown, just put your eyes on his ultimate cooldown. Three, two, one, off. How, that's like, and we Remake is still dead for 30 seconds. You see how Zed's ultimate cooldown is what, like 15, 20 seconds? That's crazy. He's gonna use it again, you see he's gonna use it again. He's gonna kill Yami as well. That's another kill, and he has his cooldown up again. So. And in like 20 seconds, he's gonna be able to do it again. That's funny, isn't it? Like, the cooldown is so unbelievably low that you can just do that as a Z. And that is why I told you guys that in certain scenarios, with certain playstyles, Z can be an insane late game champion as well. Because you can see Prusher constantly going in. He has his ultimate again. Look, he has it again. And he uses it again on long this time. Long bursts his stasis enchant. But he's still dead because he just can't tank up that damage. Prusher is just playing that Zed so unbelievably well. And then Echo 2 playing the Jax. He hasn't died a single time, by the way. And you know what's probably, from everything, what's craziest of all? Is that Nova Esports is only behind 2,000 gold. Regardless of them being behind 13 to 6 kills. Them being behind the Baron. Them being behind the Elder Dragon, they are still not behind in gold. It's only 2,000 gold, which is essentially nothing in the late game. And as you look into a replay as well of that team fight, like, look at how Kapo Siva's positioning was just incredibly good. You can see Nova actually stole it. I didn't even realize. Nova just stole that one. Long stole that Baron. Long dived in a 1 versus 4, and he stole a Baron. I mean, what should I? What else? What else can I say right here? Long is just the absolute pinnacle of jungling. He stole the Baron in a one versus four situation. Unbelievable! Furious Gaming is actually overextending. Like the Prusher used his ultimate, but unfortunately he got caught out by the CC from Nova Esports. Um, they did kill Remake, which is good, but Prusher is dead now. And um, wow, that's crazy. 
the Opa can actually push and try to do something, it's gonna be really hard for them because um, Furious Gaming does have the answers to Baron Wave, which is Sartre on that Orianna. You can see he's playing Orianna, he's just destroying that Baron Wave as well. Champions like the Ziggs, like the Orianna, like the Morgana, these are champions that can push out um, minion waves very, very effectively. And especially Baron Waves as well. So Sartre and Orianna is going to have no problem at all pushing out that Baron Wave. So Nova unfortunately cannot get a single inhibitor out of this. They can't, like, they can't even get a turret out of this Baron. So sure they denied the Baron from uh, Fury's Gaming. But they can't actually get anything out of it. And two more seconds and it runs out. And the Baron just ran out. So you can see it ran out. Next Baron is going to be spawning soon as well. So yet again, it's just Nova Esports. There. It's so hard for them to win this game. Because... They don't have assassins either, because if you have assassins like the Zed, like the Diana, you know, like the Katarina, etc, etc, you can still win games if the enemy has Elder Dragon. Uh, pretty, not easily, but more easily than if you don't have assassins. Here you can see, this is what I mean, right? Like, um, 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 Prusher just went on Remake, you can see it. Remake burned his flash. Worth it, right? Worth it. Prusher is gonna have his ultimate in like 10 seconds again, and he's gonna go right back. And next time, Remake is not gonna be able to survive. This is what I mean, like, this is the moment where you kinda need those assassins on Nova Esports because the all-in-all 5 versus 5 team fights, you're not gonna win against Furious Gaming. Especially Yize on that Garen, he's gonna take a lot of punishment because when you get an Elder Dragon, which Furious Gaming did, you're also gonna be dealing through damage, right? So, um, Furious Gaming is gonna, be able to, is gonna be able to burn through Yize quite easily, you know, they're gonna be able to burn through the Garen quite easily. The next Baron is spawning as well. We're 26 minutes into the game, by the way, and Furious doesn't want to lose this Baron because this Baron right now is actually a stronger temporary buff than the Elder Dragon. The reason is because Baron also buffs your stats. It buffs your, um, it buffs your attack damage and it buffs your ability power. And the later you get into the game, the bigger the buff becomes and it's exponential. So now that we're like 27 minutes into the game, this Baron is like unbeatable. Whenever a team takes a Baron right now, their stats are gonna get buffed so much that it's just impossible to beat them out. And especially if Furious Gaming takes this Baron, they're gonna have the Baron plus the Elder Infernal Dragon. That, like, their damage is just gonna be way too much for Nova to deal with. So, let's see what happens. You can see both teams are trying to look for something, but it's gonna be so hard for Nova to win this team fight. Because, as I said, they don't have assassins. They just have to face up against an, a team who has an Elder Dragon. And the team that is stronger in the late game. Because Furious Gaming's champions are just so much stronger in the late game than Nova's champions. So you can see Nova is just kind of desperate. They don't really know how to deal with this. And I would have actually loved to see Nova uh, put Nyan in the side lane right now. I would have loved to see them put him in the bot lane. He needs teleport boots however. So like buy teleport boots on the Lucian. Split push the bot side with your hole breaker. And teleport to your team whenever you need it. That's what I would have wanted to see from Nova. Because... At least then you can bait out someone from Furious Gaming to roam around to the bot lane. And then you can teleport to your team. But it seems like Nova just wants to do a traditional 5 versus 5. Which I really don't think is the right thing to do right here. But yeah, let's see how it works out for them. Man. They don't have vision on the Baron either. So it's just a bit of a rough position for them. Ooh, Libra on that Jace is on the bottom lane right now. This could potentially be a good opportunity for Nova to fight. Interesting. Nyan sold his hole breaker. And went for a Divine Sunderer. So that means Nova is actually fully, fully focused on team fights. And you can see it. Nyan doesn't even want that hole break anymore. He doesn't want to split push. All they want to do right now is just team fight. And Yize got... Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. You see that? Prusher uses his ultimate. And Yize wasted his flash. Worth it. You see it over and over again. You see this tactic work over and over again. Prusher is just... I was trying to make a word joke. Instead of punishing, I was going to say punishing. I, I didn't want to say that, that, no, but I said it anyways. That's embarrassing. I'm sorry for everyone that has to watch me make jokes like that. Look at, look at, look at the bot lane, by the way. Long is winning against Libra with that Fiora. Oh, he did get killed as well, though. But yeah, that's because of the Elder Dragon. Libra is dead, however. Look, Nyan is dead, but now Furious can start the Baron. Because Long is not here. Look, Long is not here. This is just a free Baron. And they do it. They do it. Curious Gaming just took a free Baron right now. 29 minutes into the game. They got an Elder Dragon and they got a Baron. That means game over. There is just absolutely no way Nova can do anything right here. Because Baron plus the Elder Dragon, especially like Sartre on the Orianna, is just going to be unbeatable. Look at this, by the way. Prusher against Zize. Ooh, close one. 
DJ is still playing the Garen. Oh, damn. Prusher nearly got cut. Prusher should die here, right? 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 Yeah. No. Yeah, okay. He may actually not die because it's a Z. He could shadow away. There it is. There it is. Kaposiba can also survive because of his ultimate. And meanwhile, it's Echo on the bottom side. Just on that Jax. Doing Jax things. And I don't think Nyan can stop him. Uh, I don't think anyone can stop him, to be honest. So let's see. You can see he's just tanking up Nyan's damage like it's nothing. Prusher as well, you know. Doing what Zeds do. Burning the stasis enchant already from Nyan. And he's gonna go right back. Ize could actually kill Prusher if he gets close to him. Because he nearly has his ultimate. But right now, like... It just feels like Furious Gaming is afraid to finish the game. It's like everyone is playing so safely in this game. It's funny to see because they don't want to lose, right? Because there's so much on the lines of these games. So you can see teams play incredibly safely when they shouldn't really. Because uh, Furious Gaming needs to push their win right here. This is their one chance to push their victory. It seems like they're gonna push. They're all gonna push in the mid lane. I would love to see one person in the bot lane, one person in the top lane. Yeah, there you go. Capo Sibas rotating to the bot lane. This is what they should do because they want to apply maximum pressure, right? They want to have Baron minions on every single wave. And you can see on the top side of the map, e Echo is fighting against Long, and Long is not winning anymore, even though he's playing Fiora. And that's because of the Baron plus the Elder Dragon buff. He actually did win. Wow, unbelievable. Baron buff, Elder Dragon buff. Apparently, none of that matters when you're Long and when you're playing Fiora. You're still gonna win, but he's gonna die against Pusher. There's, there's no way, and this should be game over. Look, I mean, look at that Oriana damage as well. They're pushing every single lane, every single turret, and they should be pushing the Nexus as well right here. Like, you see, right? Nova is desperately trying to defend, but it just doesn't work because they can't beat a team with an Elder Dragon and a Baron 32 minutes into the game. And yeah, this is it. Pusher yet again ulting, and this is game over. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I mean, I did. I really enjoyed watching these teams. I was watching it live as well. So thank you very much for watching. And I will see you all in the next Wild Drift video. Bye-bye.